Coming up on Forward Motion. It's not often a class can change your life, but it happens over and over again here. See the dramatic transformation students make during the Odyssey Project. The seed for this idea was planted decades ago when two lives came together at a college for the poor. A generation later, their path out of poverty inspired their daughter to do the same for others. I've been redeemed, I've been set free. And finally, the end of class is just the beginning of the journey. Stay with us, Forward Motion is next. A small library in a low-income neighborhood of Madison, Wisconsin, is an unlikely setting for a story of transformation. It is quite unusual. That's just a, a mind explosion. Every Wednesday evening here, you'll find a university class like few others. On Wednesday nights, I believe in the American possibility. Freedom to vote was not a part of it. That would have just been assumed. Very often, uh, the university doesn't make the kind of appearance that it makes here. There's a lot of experimentation. The groundbreaking UW-Madison program is called Odyssey. I am Odyssey, and Odyssey is me. I didn't know my true self, only my past. I am that person that is still rising. If you want to take this journey of education, jump aboard without hesitation. I can see a better future, apparently, because now I take my life seriously. Oh. I get 30 new students coming in who are scared. They don't know if they're college material. And yeah. within a matter of a few months, they're finding a voice. Would I be damned? And then suddenly they're giving opinions, writing editorials, speaking up. To strengthen the pillars of learning. They don't look like your typical college students. You have people from all different walks of life. Everybody wanted to learn, and everybody was eager to listen. Sensual, eating, drinking, and breeding. Eating, drinking, and breeding. You got this feeling of a class that was just on fire. They contributed. It was a class that was learning. At the heart of the Odyssey Project is the belief that education will open doors. In our educational system today, we are serving the needs of the privileged. We are locking people out. They've been told you're not college material. Odyssey helps to bring out that voice, you know, that may be buried way down deep. To get out of poverty, you need to be given opportunity. Odyssey is a unique opportunity. This year-long humanities course is a gateway into UW-Madison. Well, it's absolutely a university class. It's just in a place people can get to. These students are earning six credits. There are times when you simply have to bring what you're doing to where people are. I had faith that if you gave people Shakespeare and Socrates, Emily Dickinson, Martin Luther King, Walt Whitman, something was going to happen. But not everyone had faith. I think there was lots of, uh, of skepticism. It took three years to raise the money and get the institutional support to start this program. The tendency has been to think, well, the highfalutin liberal arts really aren't for poor people. I've run into people who will think that the poor are lazy. We were the ones that people said couldn't, didn't want it, couldn't do it. They don't want to read any Shakespeare. Like, what do we want to do? I was told, nobody's going to want to take your class. Poor people don't want to read Plato. You're going to have trouble filling a program. The reality was quite the opposite. Within a few weeks of advertising a free college course in the humanities, we had over 100 people applying for those 30 spots. There's a hunger in the community for some kind of access to higher education. And then we'll wind up with the civil rights movement. My goal was to try to get into the UW for the fall. For Billy Kelsey, this was a second chance. She actually started college several decades ago. I was pretty miserable. I didn't really fit in with anybody. I dropped out. I was homeless for a bit. I mean, just living on people's couch couches. Billy raised a son as a single parent. I was the man of the house of my entire life. <laughs> I was pretty poor. She realized education could be their way out of poverty. The way that I looked at it was that I have to make things better for him. We have people struggling with such hardship. 
I have students who are living in a shelter while trying to read Socrates. They have been hungry, they have been told they're dumb, they've experienced racism, they've been written off. Police officer Anthony Ward knows how easily he could have landed on the other side of the law. Because I grew up around drugs. As a kid, I was just really frustrated and, and angry. My mother started doing cocaine and eventually crack cocaine. She would take stuff that she had gotten us for Christmas, take it to the pawn shop. I could have just said, okay, I'm going to accept this culture and become another statistic. Instead, he fought to escape. An odyssey gave him the tools. Because I've always wanted to go to school, but I knew I didn't have the money. I was like, free school, like, bring it on. The most important word to me was free. Free meant the barrier wasn't there. So now that I could be and do what I wanted to do. I take it high, you too tall. I thought that too. Anybody looking at me, I want them to see that no matter what happens, be the darkest, deepest pit you can get out of it. So make sure we do a good job, okay? Many of them lead very complicated, very stressful lives where just getting through the day can really wear a person down. That's not the usual student we see at UW-Madison. Beautiful. They need to feel that somebody cares. It's not hard to feel that at every Odyssey class. It's a place that provides child care. How would you go to school without child care? <laughs> Every day before class, we have food to eat. Not snacks, not, oh, thanks for the Triscuits. I'm talking straight up meals. We help students when they're down, when they face eviction, when life circumstances threaten to get in their way. She has a way of making you see the potential and the hope in yourself. You can do it, we believe in you. I'm impressed. We run the class like a family, and the students get close to each other, they encourage each other, and there is love in that room. <laughs> but make no mistake, this is an academically rigorous course. We read parts of the Constitution, we read from the Federalist Papers. The allegory of the cave is challenging material. The sentences are sententious. Will he not fancy? that the shadows which he formerly saw are truer than the objects which are now shown to him. Being in that class for a lot of people was the first time they ever felt like they were smart. Everybody was hungry to learn. up, the inspiration for the Odyssey Project can be traced back a generation. Learn how two college students who lifted themselves out of poverty set the course that's changing lives today. That's next on Forward Motion. I celebrate myself. I celebrate myself. And sing myself. And sing myself. And what I in an Odyssey classroom, somehow Walt Whitman, Shakespeare, and Socrates become intensely personal. They bring to these texts life experience. And texts written thousands of years ago is relevant. Even when we got into Plato, you would hear people kind of like, I don't know Plato, but I've played this out in my life. We start with the allegory of the cave. So what is the cave? It's anything that will hold you back. It could be a vice, it could, you know, like um, addictions. Mm -hmm. Depression, anxiety, mm -hmm. even the fear to speak. Uh -huh. That pain is there, that pain of loss, you know, because one has lost him or herself. We're dealing with real life and what Socrates was trying to transmit, you know, in the fourth century BC comes home, comes alive. And where is the truth? Freedom of speech, bingo, that's number one. Those who volunteer to teach here say it's an experience like no other. Breathe up. They are so present. Breathe. Remember who you are. I get meaning from my life out of being here. This is absolutely 
part of what keeps me sane. You have to open up your mind in order to learn to educate yourself. What students ultimately learn is how to rewrite their life story. This program has changed people's lives. Many of them get convinced in the process of doing this that they are indeed qualified. We've had people go from being homeless to having bachelor's degrees and being in graduate school. That's what happened to Keegan Carter. While the kids were asleep, I would either study or I would be working. I never really slept. I would go to bed at 3 o'clock in the morning and wake up at 7. But it paid off. I graduated from UW-Madison with a Bachelor's of Arts in English. She's now in graduate school, and her goal is to get a PhD. I want to be a professor of English. It's possible. It is possible. It is possible. And we've been proving it over and over and over again. Education changes lives in ways no one can imagine. Program director Emily Auerbach has seen that with her own parents. I, I might have had a different mindset about poverty had I not seen them come from backgrounds of poverty and get out of it. This is one of my favorite pictures right yeah. here. And I know from the case of my parents that mm -hmm. sometimes people are in poverty because they're immigrants or because they grew up in generational poverty. Is this right outside? Wanda Auerbach was one of five children growing up in the deep poverty of the Appalachian Mountains during the Depression. We didn't have running water. We didn't have physical checkup. We didn't have dental care. But that didn't stop Wanda from excelling in school. I was the top of my class. I loved reading. And I stayed in on beautiful sunny days and memorized poetry when I was in the eighth grade. And that's the kind of person I was. I was weird. Just because she was poor, that didn't mean that she didn't have some tremendous gifts. I graduated from high school early because they skipped me in grades. But college was never an option. Oh, I knew I was too poor. I never gave it a, even a thought. Until her cousin told her about Berea College, which was free. It changed her whole life. And if there hadn't been a free college for the poor, she would perhaps never have gotten out of poverty. Wanda would never have been able to go to any other school. Bob met Wanda at Berea College. And though he was poor enough to qualify, he hadn't always lived in poverty. My father was a lawyer, and my mother was a lawyer. But his family was forced to flee Nazi Germany. To be blunt, well, you had a choice. You either got out of there or you were going to be killed. So they relocated to the United States, but his parents couldn't practice law. Their profession was completely useless. We didn't have any money. Bob and I both worked for our higher education. And neither of them was content with a bachelor's degree. Bob went on to get a master's of arts in zoology and then a PhD in zoology. And I went back and got another degree in library science. My parents are extraordinary human beings. We always had music in the house and we always had books. And I think I grew up in a world of music and literature and love. <laughs> They have such an unusual story, and now I can see that it's shaped who I've become. You're going to feel really differently. It's made me value education and social justice and the power of the arts to break down barriers and change lives. But change doesn't come easy. Because of my parents' experience, I didn't want just a short-term course. So our program in Madison is designed to follow people, helping graduates of our introductory course keep going all the way to degrees and now into graduate school as well. I think that's very, very important. Everybody, if you want a chance, you're going to get a chance, okay? They not only helped me get in school, they paid for my classes, paid for my books. If my mother had been asked at Berea College to buy an expensive textbook, she would have had to go home. So we've raised money to help with all those things that threaten to shut people down. Without this program, it would have been just me. I probably would be still struggling. It was my duty to give back. She doesn't let anybody get lost to the point where somebody went back to jail and she sent him his homework in jail. 
uh, and he graduated. She's removing the obstacles as much as she can. People have a feeling of possibility in their lives. Yes, I can do this. When I'm at Odyssey, I think in terms of the civil rights movement about local people in small towns changing the terms of their existence. Standing up, becoming dignified. What this does is it affirms my belief that in a democracy, everybody's voice counts. When we come back, the dream becomes reality as students make the climb from poverty to what's happening on this stage. See the next step in the Odyssey, coming up on Forward Motion. What happens to a dream deferred? Does it dry up like a raisin in the sun? Does it fester like a sore and run? Does it stink like rot meat? Or does it crust over, sir, be sweet? Does, maybe it sags like a heavy load, or does it explode? Well, this has been a magnificent day. A day some students could barely allow themselves to dream about. I um, had wanted to go back to school for so many times. I had so many, I'll just say, excuses. None of that matters today. Of the 30 students who started Odyssey this year, all 30 will graduate. It was hard for me, but I did it. <laughs> Makes me so happy. Makes me so happy. We have the highest retention rate, the highest graduation rate anywhere. I was born in prison, and because of the lifestyle I chose, I was in and out of prison or jail all my life from the time I was 12 years old. I began a different kind of a journey called the Odyssey Project, setting me free from a life of ignorance. Because of Odyssey, I feel reborn. <laughs> I am the dream, I am the hope of the slaves. I rise, I rise, I rise. 76-year-old Juanita Wilson knows what it feels like to be on that stage. She graduated from Odyssey in 2007 and comes back to cheer at every graduation. Odyssey to me has been a godsend. I never thought I would be able to go to college, you know. I just felt like I was too old to learn. But after going through Odyssey, you feel like you can do anything you want to do. It's one more step in my life. I have a dream like uh, I would like to be a translator and I will continue my education. As will many other graduates like Billy Kelsey. When she started Odyssey, her goal was to get a bachelor's degree from UW-Madison. I applied and um, I guess I got accepted. <laughs> She's still challenging herself. I'm proud of her for that. I'm nervous about the work, I'm nervous about being older. But she's in good company. About two-thirds of Odyssey graduates continue with college courses. And I think that not any of them go away from this class the same. Even if you didn't go to college after that or do anything, your life was gonna be different. They're proud, they've got hope, they're reading more to their children, and they're going somewhere. And Odyssey helped open the door. You know, it gives you more choices as opposed to feeling like this is what poverty's done to me. Even if we only had one person go from being homeless to being a college professor with a good life, it was worth it. But we've had dozens of students who have had their lives transformed. I've been redeemed. I've been set free. I went from a drug addict, alcoholic, drug dealing, and gang banging thug to a hard working man of God who visits and preaches to those who are behind bars. Hallelujah. The transformation that begins with Odyssey ripples out to touch many other lives. If one person breaks out of a cycle of generational poverty, it 
paves the way for everybody else. The sky is the limit because he's gone. He said whatever it is that he needs, he's going to go forward to do it. And I'm with him all the way. This is not just about the people who happen to be in this class. It's intergenerational. That student is often a mother or a father or a sister and a cousin, and they're influencing an entire family. The way you talk to your kids was going to be different. The way you encourage them was going to be different. It's about the positive effect on people in their family, on their neighbors, on their employers. You only have to follow Odyssey graduate Anthony Ward for a day to see that impact. When I go into these schools, I see kids who have already given up hope. And it's like, huh, how can I, how can I help them? And I need everybody to listen very closely, so look at me. He decided to combine his love of education with his passion for music. Well, I want to create music that's empowering for the community. Because we got to get everybody involved. I'm preparing to be the best that I can be when I come through. I know there's some kid who is going to believe when somebody tells them they can't do something. And so I want to be able to say, hey, people told me I couldn't either. But look what I did. If I can do it, I know you can do it. Because it's not about whether you fall, it's about whether you get up. And I think that I've fallen enough, but I want to show them that they never should stay down, that they should never give up on themselves. The Odyssey Project embodies the Wisconsin idea. It brings the wisdom of the university to a community. All of them became like my family in the USA. I feel very strong and capable. This is a miracle for me. Really, it's really a miracle. Odyssey class saved my life. Madison is becoming a model for other places that are starting programs like us. What can we learn about ourselves if this is our time? Success is visible on campus every day. You see it in Odyssey graduates like Billy. <laughs> I'm going to college. <laughs> She's shown me that it's never too late to go back to school, and it's never too late to accomplish the dream. Fed by a little faith and encouragement, a dream that was dormant comes to life, and a mother joins her son as a student at UW-Madison. I tease him that we're going to end up in a chemistry class together, and maybe we'll be lab partners. <laughs> They change the University of Wisconsin when they show up in classes. There's always ways you can better yourself. Oh yes, I get better all the time. <laughs> Every day I get better. Every life is worth trying to save, trying to transform. We can't fix everything, but we can make a difference. Change is not a slogan. It's not a utopian ideal. It's a reality, and we can make it happen.